Hey guys, welcome back. We are creating art in a different way. We're still creating art together, but we're doing it now online. And so I'm just going to get started right away. We're going to be looking at the artist Beatrix Potter. She is famous for illustrating and authoring all the Peter Rabbit books. But one thing that she really, really enjoyed is getting out into nature, looking at different small animals, insects, using just pencil and sketching things out. She also used watercolor as well, but she didn't use a lot of different art materials. And so, um, just so that you're a little bit familiar with her, and if you want to, we have a video, the Peter Rabbit video. If you want to kind of um, watch that, you can. But we are going to be looking at pond life. And so the first project we're going to be working on are um, using just basic materials. You can use a sketchbook like this. This is just a small line sketchbook. It works great. Or maybe you have some paper, cut it in half, make it the size of your hand. You don't have to work large, work small. And then um, basic materials. You don't have to have fancy materials. You can use crayons. These are crayons from when my children were in kindergarten and they're the really big um, crayons, but they work great. Or if you have the small box of crayons sitting around, go ahead and grab those. Remember, even broken crayons still work. If you have any type of glues or colored pencil, you can use those for our projects. Just basic materials. I found some old watercolors um, that will work great as well. So again, you don't have to have fancy materials for creating. If you just have a pencil, just use a pencil um, or a pen. Remember, Beatrix Potter just used basic materials as well. So the project we're going to work on today is creating a lily pads with water lilies, some reed plants that are in maybe a small pond or a bog. Um, we had talked about seeing a small pond over um, near Millbury. There is um, a small pond that a lot of you guys have passed when you are um, being on the school bus or um, kind of traveling around, you'll see these water lilies in those ponds. Now this is a basic water lily. You see the, the large lily pads, and then this is the flower, the lily. Now, if you understand, White lilies are considered hardy lilies. They come back every year. The roots of these go way down, oh, a good 12 inches, where if this is pink or purple, those lilies are considered tropical and they would be in a tropical climate. If you understand in Ohio, we have snow, it's not always tropical here unless it's summertime. So a lot of the lilies that you see in ponds have um, white lilies. Those are hardy lilies, hardy water lilies. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna sketch these out with pencil. And then I'm gonna show you some different options on how you can add color to your water lily habitat. Um, Beatrix was very much influenced by ponds and she wrote different children's books based on that. So she was really inspired. You can see over here, there is a little frog 
And that is the tale of Mr. Jeremy Fisher. He's the little frog next to the water lily. But then this is a painting that she did in 1906. And it's uh, kind of like the, the water lilies in the tale of Mr. Jeremy Fisher. Um, and it is the same type of habitat that he would have been in. She used pen and ink and watercolors. So you could use pen, that'd be fine, an ink pen, but I'm gonna sketch it out with a pencil first. So some options that you can do is, um, this one was sketched out, these were all sketched out with pencil. This one is colored pencil. And this one is crayon. The crayon's a little bit brighter, um, but again, you can see that there are two options. You could also use markers as well. I'm going to sketch out how to create this um, habitat of the water lilies and the bog plants. And then from there, I'll show you how to add watercolor. The first thing that we need to add, and I always say we need to add, is just kind of where maybe the water and the sky meet. Now in her painting, the water goes fairly um, fairly far back, but we're just gonna give just us a very light line. Don't draw it super, super hard. And then now we're gonna add those large water lilies. They look like Pac-Mans that are crushed. And then they have those little veins. Remember the veins are what brings the nutrients to the plants. You can have some overlapping water lilies and then larger ones. And you can have the little kind of the cutouts right there or maybe yours haven't had those little notches yet formed. Again, I'm overlapping a lot of my water lilies. And then the flowers are super, super easy to make. I always start with a little U and then bring them down, these little petals, and they're just upside down V's or little, um, you could say they look like little mountains. You don't have to make them super, super big. The flowers are always much smaller than the large leaves. Maybe you wanna have two, maybe you want one down here. So I'm gonna do that U and put those curves in and then add some more petals overlapping. Now remember, there's going to be a really long stem and these go way down into the bottom of the pond. The root systems are way down. So the leaves float to the top, but the roots are pretty much down in the um, dirt or the sand of the pond. And then when these lily pads cover the water, then the fish and any type of uh, animals or uh, even insects that are underneath, they are underneath and they're eating a bunch of the little, um, you could say any type of growth that is, um, not taking, um, not good for the water, they'll eat that up. So the fish love to be at the bottom of the pond and they're just chomping away at any bacteria. And then you have your, these are the floaters right here. They like to float at the top. Plants down underneath in the water are submergibles and they are the ones that kind of keep the water clean as well. 
So we also need to have these beautiful reeds. Now these are just really tall, thin grasses that grow in ponds. So these are really super easy to make. They're just straight lines that go down. And then I'm just gonna add some more over here. Remember, it's up to you how you want your pond to look. I'm only doing a couple flowers. Maybe I'll do one more right here. So I'm gonna do a U, put the petals. Remember, they're just upside down Vs and put those in. And then he's kind of floating on top of the water. And then here are some more reeds overlapping. There's a lot of these. They're pretty healthy, so they're really growing in abundance. So I'm gonna add just a couple more of the veins. And then it's time to add color to our water lilies. So now to add the color to our water lilies, I'm just going to use some old paints that I have found laying around our house. And you can tell they've been around for a while. Remember, just like when we're in our art studio at school, we always start with the lightest colors first. So I'm gonna use this yellow and it has some green in it, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go in and just kind of put some yellow in my lily pads. Then I'm gonna kind of work into the greens. That green kind of looked the same. It's gonna be kind of a surprise to see what colors these are because have been around for a while. All right, so I'm gonna add some green now and I'm just gonna keep on working in there. If you get out of your lines, remember it's okay. Just adding some in here. I really like how watercolors do kind of overlap and blend. And add a little bit more yellow and now into the greens. Now, if we want to make this green darker, I know you're all gonna be shouting out, add black. You can add black. You can also add a little bit of brown. Now that brown's really brown, almost has like a red, a red to it. I could add a little orange to it. The orange will actually make it look a little bit more brown. I can also add, I have a little bit of turquoise. I can add that. Remember, kind of limit yourselves to a couple colors per lily pad. And I'm just going to keep on adding more and more and more. So I'm working on the lily pads first. Adding some of that turquoise. That's a really bright turquoise. But remember, if I want it darker, I can use brown or this orange is going to really make it look cool. Sometimes you think, oh, the weirdest color is mixed together, but that's kind of how the color wheel works. When we start mixing colors that are opposite, that's when we get those browns. If we use the colors that are next to each other, 
those really, those analogous colors, those really stand out sharp as well. It's very pleasing when you see the colors that are next to each other. And you can see I'm just kind of tapping them in. It doesn't have to be really heavily painted either. Water colors are more translucent. You can kind of see through them. They're not opaque. Remember, we, we always kind of talk about those science terms. You've heard me say that a lot. Make sure it's opaque. You don't have to have watercolors opaque. And I'm just going around. And if I want my edges to be darker like she did, I'm just going to work around the edges. So make sure that you get all of your lily pads filled in. All your lily pads filled in. I really liked how this green right here and this orange mixed together. I really like that. And it just gives you a little bit darker. And remember, if you're mixing in your paint trays, all you have to do, if you get too much, and just take your brush, kind of rinse it out. Remember, do a, a, a gentle tap. You're not playing the drums, so you don't have to splash because that splashes all over everything. Just tap once and then go in and fill in your water lilies. I'm gonna make them just a little bit darker over on this one. If you don't have a paintbrush, you could also use a Q-tip. It might kind of fall apart a little after a while, but you could just try that out too. Or a paper towel. Just kind of be creative with what you have. You're smart, you'll figure it out. And then I can go in and I can start adding some of those grasses. Now I'm gonna go also add in the water. So I'm gonna start with a light blue. And remember, if it gets too dark, I'm not gonna add more paint, I'm gonna add more water. Adding more water makes it more transparent translucent. Just keep on adding what you want. Maybe you don't want to have a blue water. Maybe you want your water to have a little bit more purple in it. And if you really like doing this, you can make a second one and kind of create more color choices with what you have. I want it to be a little lighter over here, so I'm gonna add some more water. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit. You can do a dry brush where you don't have a lot of water on your, your um, paintbrush either. I'm just going to kind of work a little bit farther back. Now we've always saw, why is there white in these paints? That's always been a question. Why, who, why would they put white watercolors? Well, it actually works and it tones down some of your colors. So if you want to do that, go ahead and do that as well. You can get the same bright look using crayons too. So again, 
just keep on adding your color. Now, for my water lilies, since they're white, because they're hardy, I'm just going to add a little bit yellow to the centers, just a little bit. And then I'm going to start adding more. Keep your paintbrush on the tip. Don't lay your paintbrush down. If you lay your paintbrush down like this, you're gonna get much wider brush strokes. You don't want that, you want thinner. I'm gonna add a little darker as well. Maybe some of those are dying off. They've been there a while. Maybe some dark blue. And oops, I got some on my water lily, but that's okay. And then I'm just gonna go in, maybe make it a little bit darker here. And then, I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to take a pen or a Sharpie or even a pencil and retrace over it so it really stands out because I want it to really stand out some. Maybe I'm going to put some color away up in here. Maybe that's going to be my sky. But the key is to these is having these be thin and make sure that those are thin, okay? So I'm gonna let this dry and come back in a couple minutes. If you have just a regular ink pen, this is going to work Fine. Just kind of go in. It's going to give you those really delicate lines that you want. And don't forget to go in and add the veins. If you want to use a Sharpie, you can. That's fine. It's going to still give you those, those lines, but this pen works great. I'm just going in and I'm outlining everything that I drew. Now, if I want to have a little bit of cross hatching, I can. Those that's that really delicate lines. I can add some of that in as well. I can even add a little um, texture inside the flower. I'm going to do that for all my lilies, the flowers, and the lily pads. Just using a marker or a pen. The pen is working great. If you have washable markers, you can get the same look by just kind of outlining the edge and then filling it in. This is the time that you can really explore with different materials and items in your house. You don't have to have fancy You don't have to have any type of fancy type of materials. And I'm just going right in and adding them. So just keep on working on your project. Okay, so once you 
have pretty much everything outlined, you can go in and just kind of add just a little bit more, making sure that you follow where your watercolor brush strokes are. Even down here in the water, I'm just going to kind of outline some of those different zones where the watercolor stopped and started. And then you have your habitat of your pond. You have your large water lily leaves. You have the flowers and you have some reeds in the back. But you also have your colors. You have overlapping. You have some shading. And you have the contour line. So you're really getting a lot of different design elements in your beautiful drawings or paintings. This one again is colored pencil and this one is crayon. If you have washable crayons, which I have, you can actually just paint some water right on those crayons and they'll blend out to look more like the water colors, the paints. So really kind of explore and see, see what you have and have fun creating. Again, three different ways, or you could just do pencil and paper. Okay, have fun creating.